right, tonight, this will be our 41st lesson in Ephesians. We're in the fourth chapter. This is what might be called the practical section of the book. Of course, God's people should have an increasing disdain for any form of religion that isn't practical. <laughs> if it can't be translated into life, like how's God going to get glory out of something like that? Now when it comes to a spiritual growth, which is rather an uncommon subject, I don't know if you've noticed this in your lifetime, but you don't hear a lot of talk about growing up in Christ. But there in my perception at least, Three things that are essential if somebody's going to grow up into grow up into Christ. One is the first is that the truth pertaining to God and His great salvation has to be declared or affirmed. Yeah, <laughs> and when we say this, this includes such things as the preeminence of the Lord and His Christ. It involves the revelation of what God has promised and the revelation of his purpose, what he, in, what he intends. Now these three pillars all support all sound reasoning. The declaration of God and his promises, the revealed purposes of God, and the objective where it's going. These three things, you can't think right about things of God if you don't know these things. Amen. Second, faith is imperative in the kingdom of God. Believing what God has declared of himself his purpose, and the objective of the purpose. Those three things. And third, after you declare the God, and the purpose of God, and the objective of the purpose, and you believe in God, and the, you believe the purpose of God, the objective of God, now the third part is shaping your life around it. If that doesn't happen, the other two things don't count. So that's what Paul's doing now. He's shaping our life around these. You have to have a reason for living. Amen. Amen. For the drunk, the reason for living is they have a drink. <laughs> that's why they live. The drug addict, that's what they live for. They live for the next high. Amen. Well, we have a reason too. Amen. We have a reason for living. That reason involves, say, this is the best translation of all. The translation of the truth mm -hmm. into living. Amen. And the truth is perfectly adapted for this. God made people, particularly creating them in Christ, so they could live out what, what he said. That's what he wants. He wants to teach holy angels that what he says wisdom can actually be lived out and perceived by somebody else. You can actually see how wise God is mm -hmm. by what he, what's yes. the other person is doing. Yes. Okay. And you can see how corrupt the devil is by what his people are doing. Yes. So Paul has expounded, he clearly expounded the superiority of God and Christ. He told you the first chapter what God did, you know, we went over this several times. And what uh, Christ, his role in the whole matter, and how, what God is intending to do. Now, the, the complication of this is that we've got our, on our hands a religious culture that's been developed 
that has rendered people incapable of perceiving the truth. That's the kind of culture we're in. You see, everybody's able. No, no, everybody's not able. No, this is not so. There's a whole host of religious people that really cannot figure it out. And the reason they can't is because of this well-planned, by Satan, this well-planned culture, religious culture, that strangles the life of the believer. It shuts off the source of power. Amen. And now this culture is in place and is rather successful as far as Satan is all over the world. And the church at large is in the grip of lethargy. Yeah, that's right. It's just plodding along, not making anything, not saying anything, not doing anything of Consequence. Yeah. Brother, do you think that the, in the Lord's parable of the sower, that the, sur, the third soil, the one that where the word was choked out, I think would that come yes, under that? I think that's well fact, said. What you just said would come under that. Yes, yes, and this I'll tell you my own opinion of that also. That people have too much time mm -hmm. on their hands. Yeah. The stuff they're busy with, I mean, I know it takes a lot of time, but it's, <laughs> it's frittering away an awful lot of stuff. Some people spend more time in their automobile than they do with God. Do you know that? So there's, there's too much time, and what has happened with that time, now that that's filled up with these lusts of other things, and Things that lie under the under the soil, cares of the world, so forth. Now it's got a lot of time for that to develop. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the Lord's description there in Luke, especially, it went, the words that the Lord uses go all the way from troubles. That's right. To riches. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. bad things happen to you. Yeah. And mm -hmm. wonderful things happen, but they both choke out the. It's world. all distractions. Uh -huh. See, it absorbs. It absorbs the attention. Yeah of the people. Mm -hmm. It takes the attention away from mm -hmm. eternal matters, eternal matters, and it looks it, it looks smart and some people think this really they're planning well and all this sort of mm -hmm. thing, but they're they're too caught up in what's passing away. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 See and you can't you can't live that way and pay heed to what this text we're going to be dealing with. Uh, it will involve all three. If it, once a person sees it, and this can't be bound on a person, let well, me make, make this clear. One person can't bind this on another person. Until this is made clear, people are like cripples. They hobble along. You can only focus on what you can see, so they can't see it. I mean, That's the person right. has to be able to see it for themselves. See, say that he could like just cloud up, just throw up a fog, or he could get you looking someplace else. He, he, and this, what Brother Dean's talking about is looking someplace else. I would, say, I would say people would be a cripple at best. Yeah. At worst, they've already <laughs> fallen into a ditch. That's right, yeah. too. Amen. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we have Martha and Mary right there. Mm -hmm. She's wrapped around the axle with so many things yeah. that she forgot Jesus was right there. That's right. And there she yeah. could be in there talking to him. That's right. Mm -hmm. the, I can see that, that what has to be mastered, not mastering it, that's phase two, but... <laughs> What has to be mastered is when the Lord is near, when the things of God are within the grasp, when your mind's diverted, pointed toward the Lord, or the Lord's ministry in something, that of all times is not the time to leave and do something else. That's what you learn from, from Martha. Jesus was in the house. I know I've, some of you have experienced it, I'm sure, that some people say, good land, it's time to eat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, listen, I've been right in the heat. I've experienced this. Right in the heat 
of a tremendous spiritual awakening. And people got to thinking about how much sleep they needed. What happened? Same thing happened to them happened to Thomas. He wasn't there when the Lord breathed on him and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. See, what we're talking about now ad addresses that, mm -hmm. that situation. It's something personal, but everybody has to work on it. So Paul is opening up the kind of human involvement is, that's necessary for, salva for salvation to be brought to culmination. Yeah. Salvation's got to be finished. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a salvation ready to be revealed in the last day. Yeah. So being saved involves getting in the door, but it also involves staying in the house and growing up in the house so when the householder returns, you're ready to receive him. Amen. And for that salvation to be completed, Amen. That, that's, what we're talk, that's what we're talking about now. Well, the first verse is, is said, walk worthy. We're talk, the subject being developed is walk worthy of the vocation with you have been called. Walk worthy. God called you. But you want that call to be brought to fruition. You've got to walk worthy. You have to, so to speak, qualify. Walk worthy. All right, that's what you're going to develop. With all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, for bearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. All right, now, you, you notice we're talking about the body here. We're not talking about you. We're talking about the body. You are a big zero if there's not a body. You've been placed in a body. Amen. Jesus is the head of the body. His body is his fullness. In which his fullness dwells. His body. That's where the, his body. That's the main thing. Yeah. Why? Because none of the rest of us are big enough. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, this should not require extensive exposition. Mm -hmm. None of us are large enough to contain what God intends, fully intends yeah. to give. Yeah. And he's not going to dump it all out on you because you can, you're not big enough. Jesus is the only one all of it could dwell in. Amen. So he's got to have a big body Amen. to pour it out into. But I'm going to tell the body how to, how to conduct itself. Remember when you think about the bigness of God, <laughs> Jesus did appear to be like everybody else. That's he right. did look, he was the same size That's as right. everybody else That's right. physically. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about these the, the dimensions of these things, we're talking about a different realm. Yeah. A different realm. Amen. His manhood, mm -hmm. his birth was a miracle, but his manhood was too. Yeah. Because of what you're talking about, what yeah. he contained. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the subject of memory under consideration is walk worthy of the vocation with you have been called. Live in a manner consistent mm -hmm. with that calling or complementary. Of that calling. There's no salvation to anybody who lives in contradiction mm -hmm. of their calling. Mm -hmm. His friend says, called us mm -hmm. into the fellowship of his dear son, right? Mm -hmm. First, that's our calling. We're talking about our calling. He's called us to holiness. These are statements of Scripture. Mm -hmm. He's called us to eternal glory. Now, any manner of life that conflicts with that is wrong. We don't have to discuss it. We don't have to talk about it, debate about it. It's just wrong. Walking worthy of the calling is walking in a manner that which you can actually have fellowship with the Son, yeah. and you can actually experience the grace of Christ, and you can actually be holy, mm -hmm. and you can actually end up in glory. Yeah, amen. You see, you mean how I live determines whether I get it? Yes! Yes. Yeah. So I didn't think it's of works. It isn't of works. But you've been recreated to work. Amen. Amen. Now I use the word with, with all holiness and meekness. It's a real word too. In the original and in English, it's a real word with. Other versions say 
in living is becomes very weak. Almost, almost all of them are very weak technically. The lexical meaning of the word with is with, after, among, hereafter, or afterward. The idea is what I'm going to say is what follows, appropriately follows the calling. If the calling doesn't result in what we're talking about here, the calling has been in vain. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're not even sure whether you were called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't substantiate that yeah. you were because this with the callings with yeah, that's right. you walk you walk worldly with mm -hmm. so this this what we're going to talk about agrees with the calling with all I like the way that I just like the Holy Spirit's words yeah, here maybe. with all mm -hmm. some versions say completely mm -hmm. or always or in every way or <laughs> The message Bible says not in fits and stars. Well, it's another one of those words that's hard to mm -hmm. hard to explain. It, it the all was translated from a word that, that means individual or each or everything. In other words, you've got you've got a whole basket full of stuff. Mm -hmm. And to be saved, you've got to use everything in the basket. Yeah. 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 The difference isn't in what's in the basket. Mm -hmm. It's in how much is in the basket you can hold. See, that's the difference. This whole basket is set before the body of Christ. It contains every, all things that pertain to life and the godliness. It contains all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. But each person, you can only have as much of this as you can hold. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And so he says all, he means all of you can participate of all of it, just in different, different measures. Yes, Sister Barb. Um, when you were speaking about the Genesis account, then the Lord told them to eat from every tree. Yeah, I, say, Lord, man. I remember at that point thinking that they had to have an appetite that was cultured yeah. for right. a great amount of food mm -hmm. because That's the right. Lord prepared so much for them. And it's the same in this way. Yeah. If someone is cultured to just have a small appetite, they won't be, have the capacity That's right. to obtain what the Lord has. So let us also culture the appetite. That's so right. That mm -hmm. increase. And, and you can't gorge yourself on one kind of fruit. Yeah. Yeah. You Maybe you never had the experience of meeting someone that gorged on the plan of salvation. Uh -huh. yeah. Huh? Yeah. Am I right? Mm -hmm. That's right. They gorged on the plan of salvation. Yeah. And that's really junk food. <laughs> That's exactly right. So you got to eat. You got to eat from all of this. It's just what you can hold. It isn't what what you can eat. Is the point? What you can hold is the point. And everybody can hold some. And the strength of the food is when a bit of all of it gets in. You see that? That's what that what causes the work. <laughs> yeah, is my all having all. And remember, we're talking about walking worthy now, the calling. Yeah. With all lowliness. Yeah. Well, you know right off the bat, this isn't something of the world. The world doesn't place any kind of premium on lowliness. Yeah. Other versions read all humility. Completely humble, because we're talking about all humility. We're not talking about a little humility, yeah. all humility. That's all that you're capable of doing. And the more natural aptitude you have, the more humble you got to be. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it works. More highly the world values you, the more humble. So the all humility is all you're capable of. All humility. Some say perfect humility. Complete lowliness of mind. The word lowliness means, academically, having a humble opinion of oneself. Now this is antithetical or opposite to pride. See, lowliness, pride's up here, lowliness is just exact, or exact, exact opposite. Exact opposite of pride. See, a person tries to exalt himself because they think that's the way they can become something. 
The humble man or woman or child depends on God exalting them. Yeah. See, it's not that they're content to be down at the, the bottom rung of the ladder. That's, that's not the point. The point is that God exalts the humble. That's, that's the point. So with all humility now, you make, if you want to be worthy, don't overestimate yourself or what you have. What you have that gives you an advantage is what God has given you in Christ. What God has given you in Christ. Yes? This, is, this happens when you have a proper view of God. That's you know, right. When you, when, you see, when you see God in the true light, then you know that you are much lower than That's right. Amen. That's right. Now, as we, as we might expect, the premier example of lowliness is the Lord Jesus himself. He's the premier example. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The text means that he had to leave that equality behind to save us, but he didn't consider himself robbed or plundered to have to do that. It's not fair that I should have to sheathe my sword. <laughs> he didn't. This isn't the way he thought. That's what the text is saying. God not robbed or equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, the lowest of all, yeah. when it comes to accomplishments, the lowest of all his creation. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, went down even further, mm -hmm. and became obedient unto death, went down further, mm -hmm. even the death of the cross. There you are. There's, there you are. That's that lowliness. Yeah. The cross. Yeah. The cross. That's the lowliness he's talking about. Yeah. Crucifixion of self, yeah. dying to self, dead to the world. That's lowliness. Amen. All lowliness. So in our Lord Jesus, lowliness was lived out. Amen. So you don't have to speculate and philosophize about it. He had all the advantages, not some advantages. He had all the advantages. Yeah. And the father said, now you're going, I'm going to make a body for you, and it's not, it's not going to be, it's going to be a body for dying. Because you can't die unless I make this body for you. Yeah. And you're going to have to go down, stoop down. In fact, you'll never be the same after this. Yeah. Right. Even after the end comes, you're going to turn the kingdom back to me and you yourself are going to be subject to me that God might be all in all. So this is like an eternal consequence Amen. to this son. Yes. Right, God. If I might add lib here, the son says, Father, I love you so much, I'll do it. Yeah, right. I'll do it. As long as I, I'll, I'll, I'll overcome the devil as a man, not as God. Yeah. I'll sheathe the sword of deity. Then I'll take it out when I get back to glory. <laughs> yeah, see, the, it's not sheathed now. Everybody knows that. Now that Jesus exalted, the sword's not sheathed now. He's wielding all power. But see, when he was, when he was on earth, he humble, lowly. He was crucified through weakness, the scripture says. So lowliness was lived out. Now, uh, Paul, he, he told us his experience of doing this, too. All loins. He said, everything that was, I counted everything but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Uh, now, now, let's be good straight here. He wasn't talking about giving up drugs and alcohol and tobacco and immorality. and <coughs> That's not what he gave up. He gave up a premier religious career among God's people. As a premier leader among the chosen race. That's, that'd be like a person that had a lot of Bible college. Yeah, some of us, some more than others, have had to consider this. They consider, I wasted a lot of my effort. No, you can't look at it that way. You got to say, I forfeited that yeah. uh -huh. for Christ. Amen. 
that's how you have to look at it. Uh -huh. What is it? That's lowliness. Uh -huh. See, a person would be haughty, he'd say, listen here, you listen to me, because I've had so on, so and so exposure, and I know these things. I'm more learned than most. Loneliness doesn't act that way. That's right. Loneliness. Yeah, he said, "I'm my point. I'll tell you how low I am. I'm trying to apprehend that for which I've been apprehended. Mm -hmm. I'm still working at it. Yeah. I haven't got all of what Christ has for me yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I know that I can only get it as I am lowly." Don't put a high premium on these other things. So no wonder Jesus said, Jesus said if man had to deny himself. That's lowliness. He said, now whoever loses his life for my sake shall save it. That's, that's lowliness. There it is. It's crucifying the flesh. As Galatians 5.24 said, it's putting off the old man. It's not thinking of personal things, but looking on the things of others. As Philippians 2 4 says, For another perspective is seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. See, that's lowliness. It's you, you yourself are seen at the bottom, and you're banking on God raising you up. Amen. Lowliness. And, and God will do this. Amen. Listen, there's never been a lowly person God didn't exalt. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> He exalts the humble. If you could get in this category of humble and lowly, God will raise you up. All lowliness. This is how, this is how we walk worthy. All lowliness. And all meekness. All meekness. Some other verses use the word gentleness or quiet behavior, mildness, unselfishness. It's a hard word to translate. But I, mean, I think the lexical definitions are a little bit weak here on this word. Meekness assumes the existence of strength that's held in check. A guy laying on a pellet that's paralyzed, he, he's not meek. That's not a picture of meek. person who's strong has robust strength but uses it only for God. That's meek. Yeah. A good picture of a meek is a strong horse or a strong ox. Mm -hmm. If you let this horse or ox go, they could tear things up. Mm -hmm. But you harness his strength. Yeah. That's what meekness is. You take your strong points, you give them to Christ. Yeah. Brother Rick. Moses, he was the meekest man. Yes. I'll tell you, when he came down that mountain, yes. and he right. threw down them tablets, he made... Thousands of people drink the God that they have made. That's right. He made them do it. They weren't saying, Behold how meek he is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but he was also the same one as on the mountain pleading. That's yes, right. God Amen. You can see that again. Just harnessing your strength. Yeah. Your strengths are harnessed for God's glory. Amen. That's meek. And blessed are the meek. They'll inherit the earth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes. There's a, there's this meekness and the the lowliness. There's a. I think there's some subtle. There's some subtleties here. <laughs> yeah. That mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Let, well, just a comment on lowliness first. I'm not sure you always attain that simply by trying to be more lowly. Amen. That's right. and, Amen. Because actually, this is it's very subtle. What you actually do at that point, if you just say, "I'm just I'm gonna be more humble." That's <laughs> If what you actually are doing, you're turning your attention to yourself. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's and the right. problem is the the kind of the I, maybe it looks like a I don't know if this is the right term, but like a catch twenty two is mm -hmm. as soon as you think you're more lowly, yes. well now you're proud. That's yeah. right. See, it's that's like, exactly it. So that you don't obtain it that way. So mm -hmm. that's a little subtle thing. Plus another thing is is the there's a there's a kind of quasi lowliness. That's like people abase themselves. Yeah. They say, "Oh, I'm dumb and I'm stupid and I can't do anything." A lot of times, people that say that—that's actually a form of pride. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's actually a, they're masking a form of pride by like abasing themselves. Like I'm, a, I'm a worm and I'm an idiot. And people talk like that as if they're they're being humble, but it isn't humility. That's right. It actually isn't humility. <laughs> and the world, see, the world looks at some people. And they don't think, and they, the world thinks the person is arrogant. Like now, sometimes Jesus, Jesus didn't often appear 
humble. Oh, no. He made these these bold pronouncements. Yeah. He, right. he, he called the he said, "Woe to the Pharisees and scribes! They didn't think Jesus was humble. <laughs> they probably thought he was lording it over them and being arrogant." Yeah. So it's like a, there's the world has like a quad. So a lot of people in the world say, "Well." You know, we just don't know anything. And everybody says, oh, aren't they humble? Yeah. But that's not. That's not humility. That's right. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I, hope, I know I, I hope I'm being clear. what you're saying, yes. And meekness is the same way. The world will look at someone who's kind of like, um, who, who does these, these kinds of things. Oh, I just don't know anything and I'm no good. They say, oh, isn't he humble and meek? But it's a quasi kind of meekness. That's right. It's, mm -hmm. it's not really meekness at all. Both of these qualities have to be given to God mm -hmm. or, they're, or they're corrupted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think when he says, mm -hmm. with all lowliness and meekness, that's the thing that should shift the person's attention. Well, this, this, this like is it like all? I mean, this, this can't be like a pretension. Yeah, I had a lady work for me one time. She told me, she said, no, given I'm the most humble person I know. <laughs> And I told her, I said, yeah, I noticed. Yeah. And she thought she was. Yeah. But see, the world, the world will call us arrogant. Like if we say, well, we, you know, we, had, we know the truth. And any kind of language, like any, mm -hmm. any kind of language of confidence, oh, yeah. the world will automatically say you're arrogant. That's right. right. See, Who are you? Yeah, but, it's I this, know. but it's a quasi kind of meekness and arrogance in the world where people kind of say, yeah. You know, we can't know anything for certain. And see, that's just, that's not even, that's not even true. It's deception. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it, it's something that, it's a label, see, that'll be put on you. If you, if you go out and you're confident in the Lord and you yeah. speak with boldness, you see, people will say, oh, well, you're just, you're just arrogant. That's your problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. <laughs> the corresponding point to that, though, is that true humility or all humility will produce a godly boldness and That's confidence right. mm -hmm. that yes. can't be produced any other and way. It also, so consider God over anything else. It also, genuine lowliness and meekness, when someone calls you arrogant or berates you, that person doesn't go home and cry. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> I got to try harder, right? Nobody likes me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, the true lowliness. They can, the lowly person says, yeah, if they knew about me what I know about me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They've just seen some minor evidence. I live with things that I know. I am what I am by the grace of God. Yeah. It's a lowly person. That's how he talks. I am what I am by the yeah. grace of God. The lowly person, when he says, talks to his labors, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God. Yes. Right. Good, 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 yeah. if, if these two qualities are embodied in our Lord, then we are these to the degree that we are conformed into the image That's right. of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember, this is how you walk worthy. In other words, this is like a, a posture. This is like a posture that you take, you live in this posture with this low self-estimation uh -huh. and a high estimation of Christ, yeah. your Lord. Uh -huh. You view yourself as a, as a slave and Jesus is your master. Uh -huh. That's how you walk worthy. Mm -hmm. See, walk worthy doesn't talk about accomplishments. Yeah. It talks about the manner of the... Uh -huh. The manner of the walk, or the posture of the walk. You see the difference there between saying, now, with all Lord, and then you give you five or six accomplishments that you should realize. That's not the way he talks. Yes? You know, when we get a glimpse and begin to understand the riches of his grace, riches of his grace it, it? It, it can't do anything but humble you That's when right. you think about the That's riches right. of his grace. That's right. And his, his kindness towards us. The mm -hmm. grace is calculated to do that. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And and well, you've ex you've experienced it. I mean, you're talking out of your experience. You've experienced this. You know that for a, for some time, some of us, the grace of God is like it. We knew about it, but we didn't talk much about it. But when it, all, when it began to register on us, mm -hmm. it had an effect. Yeah. Teaches you to deny when you start to deny him. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Brother Gibbon, to be, to be lowly, meek, and humble. It's, we don't go after those things, mm -hmm. but that's not our objective. Actually, yeah. we, we go after Christ in, in conformity to Him. These kind of yeah. things, like a byproduct, yeah. that just sort of kind of Amen. happen. Mm -hmm. See, you know, when you're walking by faith, you know you're dependent, wholly dependent, upon. Christ and God and the Spirit and the angelic ministries and <laughs> so it's pretty hard to be proud when you <laughs> yeah. when you see that mm -hmm. yeah. it makes you more, more lowly because you know it's it's not that you presented uh, like a qualification you meant a qualification list of things it's not like this at all with all lowliness or this isn't all we're still with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering for bearing one another in love. I mentioned this already. We want to keep in mind we're not talking about personal attainments. This is not an outline of what it takes to be a better person. It's not what he's talking about. The objective is walk worthy of the calling. Then the calling, God will do something with the calling. He'll say, like, come up higher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what he'll say. Yeah, this worthiness is, is required for divine acceptance. God doesn't accept people who are not worthy. Now, we'll be the first to say, he made us worthy. Uh -huh. Of course, that's stated as a statement of Scripture. Right. He made us worthy. Amen. Why? Because he couldn't accept us if we were not worthy. And to make us worthy, he had to wash away our sins. Right. <laughs> He had to fill us with the Holy Spirit, which He poured out on us abundantly. He had to give us access <laughs> to Himself. Mm -hmm. See, but he, but this all process made us worthy. Yeah, but given that every part of salvation uh, required God to be the most humblest of all of all personalities, just for Him to even work salvation. I mean, He's dealing with a people that are absolutely way below his capacity, and yet he's delighted in bringing them up, which reveals the greatest yeah, humility he's, of he's, all. Yeah, he's... I'm not sure humility is the right word, but it, Jesus humbled himself. Now, this yeah, this is true of Jesus. With God, the long-suffering part is that it co kind of covers that. You know, with law... <coughs> All lowliness and meekness with long suffering. Mm -hmm. Some version of patience, taking whatever comes. Be patient with one another. Uh, the technical definition of long suffering is patience or endurance or constancy or steadfastness or perseverance or patience or forbearance, slowness in avenging wrongs. It's a hard, another one of those words that's hard to. <laughs> It means you're going to face things in the brethren that may irritate you. Now, we're not talking about immorality here, because the, yeah, right, yeah. the scriptures tell you what to do if it's just outright immorality and this sort of thing. We're not talking about that. We're talking about things that can be traced to being a novice, young in the Lord, not having a very large scope of knowledge yet. So what do you do? You turn up your nose... Is that what you do? Some people do. Corinth, they just, people had a lot to eat. They just sat over in the corner and ate a lot and let the poor brethren starve. That's how meek they were. They didn't think anything about it at all. See, now Paul wrote about the nature of love. He said, um, love doesn't behave itself unseemly. Love doesn't seek her own. Love is not easily provoked. Love thinks no evil. Doesn't rejoice in iniquity. Rejoices in the truth. Bears all, bears, bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. That's what we're talking about long suffering here. Think that if you had your preferences, you'd rather see this, this, and this in some of your brethren, and probably some of your brethren would rather see this, this, and this in you. <laughs> but the, it's, it's not a violating of the commandments, it's not breaking the commandments, it's not living in morality, it's just 
You think they should be further along than they are, and maybe they should, but you've got to give them time to get there. Long suffering, not reasonably provoked. If we cannot be long suffering with one another, God will not be long suffering with us. That's what it's going to come down to. Now, this is this is said in words. We don't have to speculate here. Here's what Jesus said: If you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Amen. That's what he says. Amen. So if you have a tendency to harbor a grudge, like you better get rid of that because that's not long suffering, yeah. and you're not that important. <laughs> <laughs> You're not important enough to hold a grudge against somebody. Mm -hmm. God said, vengeance is mine. Yeah. That's right. Avenge not yourselves. Yeah. Vengeance is mine. Mm -hmm. I will repay, saith the Lord. What should I do? Long suffering. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you should be, long suffering. Yeah. Another time Jesus said, with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured unto you. So if you tend to be harsh toward others, God will be harsh towards you. If you're merciful, well, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. There it is spelled out. Amen. See? Forbearing one another. It's how the government of God works. This is how it works. When you, when there's something you have to, it's like an extra load put on you. And you got to stiffen up your spiritual legs and hold it. From one standpoint, you say that they're doing the wrong thing. From another, God's testing out how strong your legs really are. You got to look at it that way. That's how you have to look at it. To First Corinthians, I was uh, reminded of the the first section of that where it speaks of um, charity, suffering long, yes. and is kind. Is kind. And I think before I had seen those as two separate points: that yeah. charity suffers long and charity is kind. Mm -hmm. But that's one thought. That's right. In yeah. the suffering long, it is kind. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And again, you've got that it demonstrated in in Christ. Here he is on the cross, dying, and he says, forgive them. Yeah. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. That's long-suffering. <laughs> he knew there was a time coming, a lot of those people just, it's just going to take 10 days. Mm -hmm. 10 days after this, some of those same people will be pricked in their heart. Mm -hmm. yeah. Huh? How'd they last out those 10 days? Well, not 10 days, 50 days. Yeah. How did they last out that almost two months? Long suffering. That's right. <laughs> if you're long suffering, some people may, it may change. So the word long suffering, they don't forget the suffering part. <laughs> Suffer that, that, it, that it is not a, a happy experience. Yeah. Yeah. Forbearing one another in love. Bearing with one another, some say, showing forbearance, enduring one another. Sometimes you may ask yourself the question, how much does a person have to take? In fact, I asked this one time when I was in a, I was in especially low time. I think I was about 22 years old, 22, 23. So I was really bottomed out with rejection. So I asked my father that. I said, how much, how much do I have to take? He said, son, how much did Christ take out of you? Well, I hadn't thought about that, but a lot. A lot more than I was being asked to bear, I'll tell you. A lot more than I was being asked to bear. So this is how you think. See, forbearing one another in love. One time, brother up in Indiana, he was trying to bring a person to Christ, and a person was obstinate. 
causing a lot of trouble. And the brother told me, he says, I'm, that's it, I'm, I'm quitting. But he was actually living with the person. And I said, well, so-and-so, is that person, is that person worth saving? Well, yeah, don't give up. They talk about brethren here. Yeah. Yeah. You might talk about brethren. What if Paul would have said, like I saw Peter eating over there at the, with the Jews, that's it, I busted off, breaking off fellowship right here now. Because I you know you got to mark them that cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine. And there he is. He was he forbearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then Peter, he didn't take him long, he come around. Or how about when Peter denied Jesus? Yeah. You think that didn't take forbearance? Jesus was forbearing, just took a look. Yeah. Yeah. Forbearing one another in love. Now this isn't a word for how you treat fornicators and this sort of thing. Yeah. Paul was long-suffering. He said, uh, he told the brethren, Philippi, he said, now, I'll tell you about myself. I've to gain the excellency, the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, I counted everything else lost. I just threw it in the garbage can. I threw it in the garbage can. All my religious training, I just threw it, my attainments, I just threw it in the garbage can. One time I said at the college out here, I said, you know, I've noticed some of you students are digging in the garbage can trying to find out what Paul threw away. You ought, you ought to throw it away too. Threw it away. He says, I, I caught everything but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He told him all about it. Then he, he said, now, as many as are perfect, that is, grown up, be, let be like-minded. This is how everybody should think. Mm -hmm. This is how everybody should read the text. It's Philippians 3, 7 through 18. And it'll, it, it'll tell you, this is how people should think. But he knew some people didn't think this way yet. So he said, Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded, and if anything, ye be otherwise minded. I mean, we're not ready to sell out. We can't see it yet. The otherwise minded, God will reveal this, even unto you, what I do in the meantime. Nevertheless, where until we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Live up, 100% up, to what you know. Yeah. Do it. Amen. Then God will show this other stuff to you. Yeah. But see, if you take long suffering out of the equation, that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. Long suffering gives room for God to work, so to speak. And a long suffering, forbearing one another in love, not in tolerance. In love, not in duty, in love. <laughs> in love. Why? Because faith works by love. Huh? That's Galatians 5, 6. Faith works by love. Let me tell you something. If there's friction in the church, faith will die. Faith will not subsist in an in a environment where people are clashing with one another all the time. Faith works by love. Wherever there's this love and preference for one another and who we are in Christ, and that faith works in that kind of a environment. This also, as you know, is the love of the brethren into which the Holy Spirit leads us, as 1 Peter 1.22 says. And which God himself teaches you to love one another. That's 1 Thessalonians 4.9. For bear one another in love. Now we're not, we're not there yet. That's all in order to something else. <laughs> you notice how all these, all these, this teaching is all in order to something else. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. See, every, every facet of the kingdom is driven by an objective or a cause or a purpose or a name. There's a reason for everything. In Ephesians, he tells you one of them was to the intent that 
now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. All right, now if the church is Corinth and are fussing and fighting divisions among them, I mean, what do the principalities and powers think about that? They think, well, Lord, you are very wise. Is that what they... <laughs> it doesn't impress them at all. No wonder Paul said to the Corinthians, let the women have power on your head in the assemblies uh, because of the angels. Uh -huh. Remember the angels. Mm -hmm. they're, they're watching things. That's good to remember when you're having our discussions and this sort of thing. Just remember the angels are listening on, looking for a reason to praise God for his wisdom. Endeavoring. I like the word endeavoring. It means to uh, it, it be diligent to do or make every effort. Eager, eagerness is involved in it. Taking care, not like a bull in a china shop. I mean, you're, you've got a particular course you're pursuing. Striving. That is, there's opposing... There's things suggesting you shouldn't do this, but you battle your way through them and do it anyway. The idea of hurrying is in it, in the word. Also, haste. That you got to, to endeavor means this. I got to get at this right now, and I got to be determined, and God, nothing's going to stop me. Endeavoring means to hasten and to exert oneself. It's like a two-sided coin. Hey, get at get at the business of doing it, and press your press, extend yourself to do it. Now these two qualities, what they do, these two qualities do, they, they like open the door through which all the blessings come. They open the door. Now what we have today, haste and diligence, they've almost been expunged. They almost are non-existent. So here's what's happened. An environment has been foisted. That meant forced off. An environment foisted on the religious community in which God cannot and will not work. That's what's happened. Now, there's no kind way to say it. it. really isn't. There's people snared by the system that are not of the system. They want out of it probably just as bad as you did, but they just they don't know how to do it, how to get out of it. But this text addresses the man of the king. This is the man of the king. You want something from God? You got to get at it, get after it now, and you have to press or push through all the obstacles. Amen. You have to, you have to be determined to get it. And if you're not, you won't. Amen. So you say some people they haven't grown for a long, long, long time. Why haven't they grown for a long, long, long time? Because they haven't been eager and they haven't been pressing. Yeah. Because if you are both of those, God will underwrite the effort and you'll Amen. get the benefit. Amen. Endeavoring to keep, not make, to keep the unity of the Spirit. Now this is not a unity men produce. Amen. This is a Spirit's unity. Yeah. I mean, when you come into the body of Christ, you come in united to everybody else's, whether they're whether they've in the world or left the world. You come in united with them. Matter of fact, everyone, when they first come into Christ, they're really glad to see someone else that's even a professed Christian. They're just yes. glad to see them, you know, and got this unity of the Spirit. This has to be kept. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Satan didn't, didn't go out to lunch, you know, when we came into Christ. He, he's going to try and disrupt. That's right. I don't doubt that he thought he really had something with Judas there in the in the 12. He had bigger things for Judas than Judas was able to do. Because uh -huh. yeah. God was in control, see? Yeah. Yeah. Situation. Keep the unity of the Spirit. So when a person, let's say, is added to the Lord, that's Acts 5.14. Or when they're led along, or when they're joined unto the Lord, that's 1 Corinthians 6.17. Or they're added to the church, that's Acts 2.47. Or they're baptized into Christ, that's Galatians 3.27. Or they're baptized into one body, that's 1 Corinthians 12.13. At the point God puts you in Christ, or at the point he placed you in the body of Christ, 
you are united with everybody else that's in the body. Yeah. Amen. And before you learn sectarian lines, you kind of like this, but pretty soon, if you buy into a sectarian emphasis, you may rule out most of the body of Christ. I was speaking with a man one time when I was in the Full Gospel Businessmen's Association. He was a member of the Church of God of Prophecy. So we were going to a meeting, he was riding with me, and I said, well, Brother Don, I said, well, I don't know very much about the Church of God of Prophecy. What, what is that? Well, he said, uh, he said now, I don't believe this, Brother Buckley, but we believe we're the only ones. Well, I says, I'm familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> with that attitude. I know I come from a similar attitude. We, we are the New Testament church. So they said, we are the only, we are it. I said, about how many, about how many people you have in the Church of God of Prophecy? He said, about 18,000. I said, praise God, you're one of the few people that are smaller than the group I belong to. Hmm? But see, that's, that's Satan's work. Satan's work dissolves the unity of the... And look what power comes with you. You ever thought how many resources you've got because you're united with the body of Christ? I'm able to read things that people wrote hundreds of years ago that made it why That's the unity of the spirit. And you can be the brother. They, you don't even bother to ask them, what church do you go to? You don't even ask. You can sense this, this, he's feeding your soul and you're feeding his. That's the unity of the Spirit, but it's got to be kept. Amen. He's got to be kept. Amen. Yeah. When I was introduced to Charles Spurgeon for the first time, I had no idea who he was. <laughs> and as I kept on reading, I'm like, no, this is really good. And it was a very long article. And oh, I yeah. was in uh, my uh, bachelor's degree at the time. And I was between classes. And I was just eager just to read the whole thing. <laughs> no. And I, I was just so edified. I, mean, you, I didn't know who he was until later on. I just. You uh, need your spirit. Yeah. You need your spirit. That's it. Mm -hmm. See, this is the nature of the kingdom. The nature of the kingdom is that when all of the family gets together, there is there are is special blessings. Mm -hmm. In the world, when all of group gets together, there are a lot of liabilities. Yeah. Arguments may break out. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the unity of the spirit. The unity of the spirit, keep it. Mm -hmm. And it will take effort. This is why... Uh, God can show something through one person and the whole body can learn yeah, yeah. from witnessing like what he did with Job. That's Not right. every believer has to go through the same thing Job went through yeah. because we're unified. We're able to learn yeah. from one another. Wonderful. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Solomon, he gave Solomon all the things of the world to show you that, that won't, that's not the answer either. So you don't have to go through the experience. That's a good point. You don't have to go through the experience someone else did. Yeah, that's right. And because the unity of the Spirit said we profit from it. Yes, amen. But we keep the unity of the Spirit in mm -hmm. the bond as a glue. Mm -hmm. The bond of peace. Oh, Yes. Sometimes you can sense Satan's trying to stir up something here. You can you can sense it. You can almost say it's not anybody in particular. You can just kind of sense on oh, some kind of Satan's trying to agitate things. Why? Because as soon as peace leaves, yeah. when the dove of peace leaves, <laughs> you got dung left. That's all. That's the way it is. Keep it in a bond of peace. What what makes for peace? That's what you can see yourself. You have a, you have a contention with somebody. Maybe it's legitimate. But now, now it's how, how do I approach this? You approach it so peace isn't disrupted. Yeah. As much as in you lies, be at peace. I mean, you got you got your limits, but you do the best you can to keep this peace because that the fruits of righteousness are sown in peace. Peace is a field in which the things of God grow. This is a peace that God gives now we're talking about. Peace just isn't the absence of trouble. <laughs> Peace is a presence of a cognizance of a oneness with God. 
You kind of know this, and that's how things of God grow in that kind of field. I maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond. That's, a, that's the mortar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the bond of peace that will keep the building together. Amen. Hmm. Amen. I think I'll, I'll end there, but there's, it's hard to end. But <laughs> you can see, I'm sure, the kind of the trend of how Paul, it's wise, isn't it? That's wisdom. Yeah. Now, this this t yeah. tactic that he's taken, it's, it's so wise. It's pretty, pretty hard to get angry with a, something like this. A couple of thoughts. It seems to me that all, all, all these qualities that we've been talking about, um, there's like there's like a quasi form of these things. Yeah. The, the Satan is counterfeited. Yeah. And, and the false church is counterfeits these two. Yeah. And the world counterfeits. All, all of these qualities, mm -hmm. going back to this long-suffering, forbearing, and love, yeah. the world kind of tolerance, is, that's, that's how right. it's, that's the quasi-form, yeah. the false form of this thing, it's just kind of, yeah. just kind of tolerate one another, and you, you have your life over there, and you have your yes, version right. of the truth, and I leave you alone, and you leave me alone, this is kind of a, just kind of a tolerance, but yeah. it's a, it's, it's all, it's a negative thing, it's not a, it's not a positive thing. That's thing. right. Whereas if, if you do this in love, you're actually actively seeking the good of the other person. Amen, amen. You're not you're not just saying, Well, I'm not gonna beat you up today. How about that? It's <laughs> that's that's the negative kind of tolerance, you know. <laughs> but but instead you're saying, I'm gonna seek the good of the other person. Yeah. So and these these other the unity, see the world talks about this a lot. Oh yeah. We gotta get sure. together, we gotta get people together, and we gotta get rid of our differences, see, and this is this is but it's a but it's a false kind of unity. It's a false kind of yeah. peace. It's just, again, it's always in the negative. It's just, okay, okay everybody now put your guns and knives away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's not kill anybody today. That's right. And this is like a victory to the world that nobody <laughs> stabs somebody else or something like that. But but this is this is a, in the in the spirit, this is a positive thing that yeah. we're, we're seeking the Lord. We're seeking mm -hmm. one another's yeah. benefit. And what happens, this creates an environment in which God can work. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, so it's that actually our work is like getting, the, getting out of the way, <laughs> getting out of the way things that hinder, mm -hmm. and then expressing in truth what we have from God. Yeah. I was thinking that, because like you said, walking worthy, so in this condition here, then you can grow up into Christ. That's so right. the body wants to be together in this condition so mm -hmm. that we can grow, right. we can increase. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. It's a, and it's pleasant. It's like a feast. It's pleasant. This, this isn't like eat, drinking cod liver oil. It's, <laughs> it's not like that. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. Amen. And once you experience this, you you went well, boy, that was that was a waste of time. The approach I had before, it was sure didn't want them working. Yeah. And this works. Of course, this presumes you're with kindred spirits. You understand, but that if you preach the gospel and you do it faithfully and you teach the things of God faithfully, it will attract people and they'll have a love of the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you decide to mix it with some other stuff, then you get some other kind of people. Yeah. yeah. You know, without without the Lord, um, there's no there's no chance of unity. That's right. I mean, outside of Christ, there's there, you'll you'll never have that unity of the Spirit. But on the other hand, because we're still in the flesh. We have to endure. We have to endeavor. Endeavor. We have to exactly. endeavor yeah. to, to keep the right. that God has given to us. Amen. And the glory, we won't have to. We won't have to endeavor. Yeah. But we got these earthen vessels. Yeah. yeah. These earthen vessels, they give Satan access to yeah. us. Amen. Yeah. Yes, we're there. I like how the the Spirit words <coughs> the, the exhortation. In uh, keeping, not making. Yeah. You mm -hmm. highlighted yeah. that. And, that. and also the unity of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So it's not uh, <coughs> left to our discretion of what what our idea of unity is or what mm -hmm. it should be. And so in both, in both of these ways, the exhortation uh, highlights the fact that our laborers are actually laboring with him. Mm -hmm. with this, him. Is not, this is not anything that we have uh, created. Mm -hmm. it's, we're, we're coming into a work that long preceded us 
and could possibly long uh, continue after us. And we're, we're coming in here into a great work where there's a, a lot of members of the body and the, the whole way that the Spirit approaches us actually assists you to deny yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, Amen. it turns you away outside of yourself. Mm -hmm. here's, how they, uh, here's how it works. I'm sure you've seen this, but I'll say it anyway. God works the work, mm -hmm. then He calls you into it. Yeah, right. uh -huh. And we get paid too. And He gets yeah. calling us into it, that's where the glory factor comes in. Because now, now the working of God is made visible That's right. to these principalities and powers in these people in whom the work's been done. Amen. Yeah. Anyone else tonight, Brother Ricky? Yeah, you had mentioned right at the beginning, three pillars to sound, to, to growth, mm -hmm. spiritual growth. One is the work yeah. of salvation and then faith in God mm -hmm. and then the application of those things, putting them in the practice. Well, chapter four is the practical outworking of chapter 3's prayer. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Really what it's about is getting getting the hindrances out of the way because the Spirit works in accord with God's purpose, which is to fill us well of the fullness of God, yeah. mm -hmm. which comes through understanding. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have as much of God as you understand of God. That's just, that's what Amen. it works. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, He doesn't put all that understanding in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. He gives some to you. He gives some to, yes, to Brother Tony. He gives some to Brother Mike. He gives some to Brother Aaron. Some to me. So when mm -hmm. we come together, we take full advantage of the fullness mm -hmm. in a spirit of meekness, yes. mm -hmm. lowliness of mind, yes. Yes, right. endeavoring to keep the union of the spirit mm -hmm. and the bond of peace. Amen. Because mm -hmm. that's how the fullness comes. And so mm -hmm. it's wonderful to see how practical this whole thing is and Boy, how God works things according amen. to His own wisdom. Because <coughs> when you understand it, it will encourage you to give yourself to the exhortation. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, often we say, if you make a place for Satan, he'll work. I mean, this is true. But we must remember that if you make a place for God, he'll work too. Yeah, that's right. Amen. See? So, yeah, I come from a background where we only, only talked about that other part, what had to be done. But see, this, the purpose for negating Satan's work is sort of make a place for God to work. That's, mm -hmm. that's the purpose for it all. And he will. Our God will. Amen. I was thinking of Now, we're joined to the Lord. We're in union with Christ. This brings about a unity. Mm -hmm. Now, in the in the modern church we're familiar with, we had a, we had union, union yes. mm -hmm. okay, but we didn't have any unity because, right. well, the obvious mm -hmm. conclusion was we're not joined to the Lord yeah. because he, he promotes unity mm -hmm. in the spirit, Amen. true unity. Yeah, Amen. Well, go ahead. One of the old timers that I know used to say, now you take two cats, you tie their tails together and throw them over a clothesline, you got union. <laughs> but you haven't got unity. <laughs> oh, true, huh? All right, anyone else tonight? Oh, yeah, Sister Sydney? About, um, you can, God will only give you um, what you can handle, I thought of at the devil's table, he'll just throw a bunch of trash at you at once. But at God's table, he'll give you what you can eat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very right good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer.